Hey everybody, Storm, and I'm out taking a little walk. You know, we just uh, I've been getting inundated with calls about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies here lately. <laughs> uh, calls, text messages, emails, people stopping by the market to see me. Um, so I think uh, I'm the, the the local point man here to talk about it and uh, with good justification I guess because as anyone who's known me longer than a, a year <laughs> knows I've been talking about Bitcoin and particularly cryptocurrencies almost with a religious fervor um, since probably about 2010 2012 yeah somewhere around there is when I when I became a believer and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I think uh, that's probably what I talk about. Uh, probably about a 30% of what, what I post on Facebook and social media, you know, Google Plus and all that stuff, Twitter. Um, I have a daily, you know, two daily papers <laughs> that have stuff to do with, uh, to, you know, cryptocurrencies. Uh, you know, I'll post links in the comments, I guess, uh, about all the stuff I talk about. That, uh, that that's dedicated to that so I guess there's really good reason why I am uh, the point man I'm turn a ringer off <laughs> nevertheless um, I have some opportunities that uh, I've been sharing with a select group of friends about Bitcoin uh, opportunities that um, that I'll talk about some other time but before I talk about those, I, I really need for people when they when they contact me to understand, I guess, why I'm a believer, you know. And it really is a religious experience. You have to have faith um, for any religious experience. But if you understand the fundamentals of it, you you know, you, that's when that's when it really kicks off. That's when you really understand. Uh, it's it's that that moment that aha moment and for me what it was is when I it was reading Friedrich Hayek's um, the denationalization of currency um, the argument refined which is he wrote originally wrote a paper in the 70s I believe that um, talked about the denationalization of money and then um, that paper uh, got him a Nobel Prize for it. I believe that's what it was. Could be wrong. Um, which then, later in the 80s or 90s, uh, before his death, he took and wrote, he expounded upon it. And for good or bad, I, I think the, his original thesis and his original paper was fantastic. It was short and to the point. And the, the argument refined, it brought some stuff, some new stuff into his argument. But for the most part, it was just basically a reiteration of what he'd already done. So, uh, but if you, if you get a chance to read either of those two, um, it's really good. Uh, either one will do you, be, uh, do you, uh, do you fine. <laughs> so, um, sorry. But you can download the, the free version of it, or well, you can download it for free from Mises.org. Um, you know, Google that. I'll put a link into it, I guess, for that as well. I mean, you can order it from Amazon, I think. Um, but I ordered hard copies of it from um, Mises directly, so because um, well, they're a fantastic organization. Um, but in there, he talks about how. Governments throughout all of history, have, you know, they have proven themselves unworthy and unfit to manage our money supply. Um, at the time of the writing, you know, he was a big proponent of gold. I still am. A, I'm a gold bug too, silver bug. Um, but I'm a huge crypto bug as well. <laughs> and. Um, you know, 
his idea is that we should have competing currencies an open market like everything else because the free market really does it separates the wheat from the chafe it, it, it's you know it's beautiful it, it, nothing else nothing else separates um, the good from the bad like an open and fair and free market um, and this money supply is no exception uh, and somehow governments have duped us all these years the uh, millennia over that we need government to manage our money to create money for us or else we wouldn't be able to do it Bitcoin absolutely took Hayek's theory put it in motion whether that was intentional or not is still debatable but it put it in motion and here it is it's working beautifully because there's about a thousand other competing currencies right now in the crypto space all competing for top dog um, some are not some are, are competing in new spaces that we never even considered you know ethereum um, is, is, is the number two um, and ethereum is fantastic because it allows other things to be built upon ethereum um, other coins other currencies to be built on the, the protocol that underlies it fantastic stuff none of it is centralized all of it is decentralized it's the purpose of it um, so that no one can control it no single entity can control it the only thing that control it is you the end user the buyer you're the one who controls it um, Right now, there's a lot of talk about how um, China and Korea and all these different Asian companies, they're, they are the biggest miners of, of Bitcoin, and they're collecting it all for themselves. But the beautiful thing about that is if they hoard it, they hoard Bitcoin, and they wind up controlling it and put no value into it for the end user, they can't force us to use it. We just stop using it, and whatever they have, is totally useless so and you move on to the next one that's the beauty of competition and it works in money and it works in monetary theory absolutely fantastically so well I'm out here walking this afternoon um, just pondering this stuff it's just fantastic and mind-boggling to think that we live in a time where something like that is even possible the implications of Bitcoin is that it's going to it's going to topple world governance as we know it <laughs> at the end and every central banker out there knows it and the implications for that means the end of war you know um, when when governments can't when governments or people who call themselves half the government have to compete for you and entice you and all provide for, provide services to you to get you to pay for that and they can't do it at the point of a gun what use do we have for it they're just businesses they're consumers like you and me um, and that's what it points out it points out the futility and the idiocy of what a government is and how actually truly peaceful we as human beings really are you know as voluntary our voluntary day-to-day -day interactions with each other are not guided by any single you know overseeing person it's just uh, it's guided by what we're, what we're willing to tolerate you know um, it's guided by what we'll we're willing to um, to pay for either in money or in time because time is is probably the most valuable thing it is the most valuable thing it's the one thing when you spend it you can never get it back so always use it wisely so you know if if you have to if you if I have to compete for your attention I'm competing for your time which translates into extremely scarce resource and thank you for watching this video um, and I hopefully you're not wasting time on it hopefully you're getting something out of it so I'd like for anybody who's very interested um, and who knows me or doesn't and is watching this video and is interested in cryptocurrency before you invest in it understand 
what it is and what its implications are. Not at a, not at a protocol level or the, the technical level, but what it means for us as human beings, as humanity. When you understand that, it's like, holy cow, <laughs> you know, this is, this is a gift. It's a gift that uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever he or the group may be, laid upon us. And it makes you understand why they did it, without a doubt, um, with a mask on. And why, why they choose not to out themselves about it. Because governments and people have vested interest in you, uh, in, in stealing from you uh, every day and keeping you under their thumb. They don't want to give that power up. They don't want to give, and that's ultimately what it is. It's not wealth um, that they're, they're sacrificing. It's control and power over you. It's the ability to flex muscle, military might, when they want to. Um, if you don't cooperate and do it the way they see fit. They don't have to convince you that they're right. They don't have to use persuasive arguments and logic and reasoning you know there's no Socratic method it's might is right you know they're egoist you know I am mightier than you and therefore it is right and that is what Bitcoin ultimately and other cryptocurrencies ultimately they get rid of that might is right that um, and, and it empowers you it, it empowers the the you know the it's the the little Ethiopian kid with the emaciated stomach and flies running out of his mouth uh, over in Africa. It empowers him, you know, because the people that that cause that situation, that keep that situation, their time and their day is limited and numbered um, by Bitcoin. You know, when when. It, it solves all those problems hunger because it allows people um, it's not a debt instrument you know any anytime the the US dollar comes into creation um, a bond has to be sold against it which means a taxpayer has to pay for it it's an instrument of debt gold silver Bitcoin Litecoin Ethereum none of those have the, that with them all of those have the freeing, they're free of bondage. Whoever mines it first takes it and then they present, they spend it how they want and you have to convince them to give it to you. Um, that's power, man. That's real power that spreads about to everybody and frees everybody. That's what Bitcoin is. So, thanks for listening to my rant and my... Uh, my tirade and I hope that you're inspired to look a little bit further and, and maybe read Hayek and understand it um, and then look at Bitcoin in the light it should be not as a speculator you know not as um, an asset class or you know or a day trader but as what it really is you know and when you see that and you understand it and that light bulb goes off, then come talk to me about it. Thank you.